Okay, hi everybody. Our names are Božidar and Radan. Uh, well, first of all, to clarify, this is me, this is him. Uh, we don't look like each other when you take pictures of us, because that would be quite confusing. So the title of the talk is State of Remote Freelancing. And if you read the abstract, we said there that we'll actually talk about cheesecakes. And you may have thought that's a joke, but it's not a joke. This is just, this slide is just a throw of the organizers. And um, this proves that, that when we send the slides in, they don't actually look beyond the first slide. Because the next slide is about cheesecakes. And cheesecakes originate, original, originated in ancient Greece. I don't know if you knew that. There's over 80 kinds of cheesecakes. There's the famous uh, Boston cheesecake. There are cheesecakes flavored uh, with uh, chocolate. Uh, there are very, very good desserts, quite popular across uh, Europe. And dosta, dosta no, no, it's OK. Look, we're, we're the main sponsors. You know, they, they have to allow it. So I think it's going to pass, yeah. So <laughs> back to cheesecake. Dosta, or, okay. Okay. dosta. OK. Dobar dan, Zagrebe. Pozdrav svima. Jako mi je drago biti ovdje. Hvala vam na predivnoj konferenciji. Hvala, hvala. And this is pretty much all the Croatian I know. It is pretty hard language. I have a feeling that you do not know Bulgarian at all, so I will, I will try to speak in English now. And uh, you will excuse my characteristic Bulgarian accent, but this is how we speak in the wild, wild east. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I have the distinct pleasure to uh, to be on a paid talk, and I know that everybody hates them because they are considered super lame. Uh, we are so incompetent with Radan that we had to pay to be on the stage. But still, we represent a pretty cool team, the team of a pretty cool company, a company who loves this city, who loves this country. You will see why, and it is an honor to be here even if we had to pay for it. <laughs> and, I, I do believe that we have some interesting information to share with you, so bear with us. Uh, we are going to speak about uh, um, remote freelance work, and if you're something like me, you're probably a bit confused because often people uh, use the terms remote work and freelance work interchangeably. And I get confused, even though I work at a company where we are supposed to be experts. So. Radan, can you help me out a bit? Uh, yes, yes, I, I think I can. I think I can, and uh, quite fortunately, as you prematurely showed, um, the next slide is about the definition of freelance. Uh, so freelance is uh, all about being self-employed, uh, basically being one's own boss, having clients whom you work for, and you select you know, the jobs that you take, and you have different gigs, and you can combine them. Um, that's freelance, it's in no way tied to how you work. A lot of freelance workers physically go to their clients' companies, they are limited to the local pool. Whereas on the other side, the remote part of the title, that's something a bit different. Uh, and it's, it's best shown with pictures, so um, we've actually asked the, our fellow teammates to send us pictures where it's clearly visible that they are you know, working remotely. And we actually got, we got, too, we got too many pictures. Uh, we, had to actually, we had to reject uh, some of them. Uh, w where are the pictures that I sent you? Well, y y your pictures was in a room without windows, so it, um, it, it didn't qualify the, you know, the, the criteria. Mm -hmm. so, uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, out of the, I, I find this one, the, the bottom center, I find it very, it's my favorite one because it very clearly depicts the ability, you know, the phrase working from, uh, from anywhere. You know, this is just, I'm guessing somewhere in Southeast Asia, um, it's on a beach and there's just like a socket and a 3G connection. And there's a laptop on which, you know, very serious work is being done in between what I guess is like bathing, you know, swimming sessions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a, that sounds pretty sweet, but how many people can, can work remotely or work free ones? This is pretty interesting yes, to me. Yes, so that's very interesting because, yet again, the next slide is about that. Uh, 
there has been a survey uh, recently done uh, in US, quite extensive survey, uh, that found that there is 53 million freelance workers. There was another survey about a year and, uh, year and a half before that, and it found something like 45 million freelance workers. And so it's rising, and that's a very, very significant number. It's a third of the US, uh, United States uh, workforce. And um, if we look at what types of jobs are um, freelancing, there's another survey that's um, breaking it down. Uh, it, this one is from 2012. It's quite hard to do such a comprehensive survey. Uh, this was done for the Freelancers Day. Um, and it's, again, it's only US uh, because of it's unified country, so it, it, make, it makes it easier to get the data. We see that the diners are topping the list, but, and you know, I hope that's interesting because part of you here you know, are designers. But also, if we look at the technical professions, uh, they're appearing quite a lot in this list, and they're, maybe they're not higher just because the categorization is uh, more fragmented uh, on that. And so that's the US. It's picking up quite a lot in the US. Um, Europe, there aren't many so concrete numbers because of the, you know, all the different countries and different associations and different registries. It's very hard to conduct uh, a comprehensive survey. Uh, but uh, there is a petition that was started by the European uh, Forum of Independent Professionals. It's a body that uh, is it's an association of all the national bodies, uh, including the um, Croatian, I think Croatian Forum of Independent Workers. I get that, don't get that a bit, but anyway, Croatia is represented. I'm very happy to say that. And in the petition, um, I'm actually very pleased to see that that really large circle uh, in place of Croatia. It's, um, it's, Croatia is represented quite highly, especially compared, uh, compared to the size, uh, to the size of, the, of the pool. Um. That's quite nice. And uh, what is also nice is that, uh, you know, in the last few years, uh, th there has been uh, more innovation probably than in the past 20 years. So uh, it, technologies are constantly rising, falling, whatever. Uh, and it is interesting for me personally, and probably should be interesting for you as well, what are the technologies that are trending uh, for remote freelance work? If we take a look at the world of open source software, we see the following picture. JavaScript is the undisputed king of open source. You know, the language might suck on so many levels, but it is the only language you can apply everywhere, on the client side, the server side, mobile. Eh, it is everywhere. Our beloved Ruby, because me and Tradan are Ruby developers, seems to be taking a nosedive, but we have a secret recovery project in works. Java, forever dominant, forever hated. PHP, why the fuck don't you die? Um, <laughs> and uh, the, 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 other, the other things aren't... Uh, uh, I, I just want to interrupt you just a second. Um, I, know, I know there's some, because he's not from here. I know there's some people maybe in the audience doing good PHP work. So later when you go to stone him, uh, I, I don't share his opinions. So just, just stick to him. Uh, I, I'm his boss, and he's now fired. <laughs> OK, um, so moving forward with uh, something a bit more interesting. Hmm. Moving forward, uh, for real, uh, what is more, in, more important for us, pro for you probably, is uh, what are the actual jobs that you can get with uh, the, those technologies. And the picture here is a bit different. Uh, most notably, Java uh, has taken the lead and uh, by a non, uh, uh, not, not a very small advantage. We have a theory about this, you know, uh, the world of software is dominated to some extent by enterprises and enterprise companies are not the most forward thinking companies, to put it mildly. So uh, if you factor this out, the picture is pretty much the same. It is a pretty good idea to be a JavaScript developer these days, a Python developer, a Ruby developer, or to be uh, involved in mobile development of any kind. We cross-reference this with more data from uh, our very own company database because, you know, TopTal is a company which can provide you remote freelance opportunities. And uh, the, the picture is pretty similar to the one we observed for open source. 
our clients are looking mostly for uh, JavaScript developers. It is kind of disturbing that many clients are looking for PHP developers, but you know, you cannot have it all. Um, Ruby, Python, very well presented, uh, so always a good investment of your time, and the same goes for every mobile technology out there, except Windows Phone, of course. So, uh, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, Windows Phone is a nice, nice platform. The problem is that nobody is using it. Um, uh, if we look at the frameworks, uh, nothing very surprising. Because of the popularity of JavaScript, uh, it shouldn't shock you that AngularJS and EmberJS are very, uh, very well in demand. Our customers are looking for people with these skills. Our customers are always looking for Ruby on Rails engineers. So an investment in Rails is a good investment in yourselves. And uh, uh, there, there are also things that uh, <laughs> I don't want to comment on, like the demand for ISP.NET. But as I said, an imperfect world. And uh, uh, now it is time to switch gears a bit and talk about the actual nature uh, of the jobs we offer as time progresses. Radan, can you yeah, enlighten us a yeah. bit? So, um, what I looked at is the length of engagements, because that's kind of probably quite something you're interested in, what kind of work you get. And we see, I'm pleased to see that we are, um, that they are comparable across languages. So no matter what your expertise, what your interests are, uh, you should be able to get, you know, comparable level of engagements, um, whatever, you know, between your, you know, be between your, in your field of uh, work. And if we look at the same uh, breakdown across the frameworks, it's also pretty level, but a bit more variation. Uh, one notable thing, to, one important thing to notice is that um, OWL is uh, kind of gone for longer. So full-time and part-time uh, projects that we see, there's some concrete uh, piece of work, uh, some project that needs to be you know, finished and delivered. Whereas the OWL is, they are more varied in nature, so, um, Quite often, sometimes the, the full-time project transitions into an uh, hourly project. That's a kind of extended uh, maintenance. And if you come from a dev shop back background, at one point I worked in um, a such a company, you should, you're probably familiar with the fact that when the project ends, it doesn't really end. There's always, oh, just this little bit thing. Oh, can you just amend this? Oh, this will be just, just an hour of work. And the hourly of provides a way to uh, formalize, you know, to formalize that relationship. And also there are very, various other use cases. Some, some, are, some companies are uh, looking for somebody as a kind of, you know, advisory to augment the internal team because they have a local team and they can't, in the local pool, talent pool, they can't find, can't find somebody, you know, really highly experienced. So they're looking for somebody remotely to, you know, jump on calls with the team and then provide them guidance um, you know, help them think through the issues uh, with the specific technology that uh, they are working on. And uh, when we look at this, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's very yellow, but it doesn't mean that, that hourly uh, dominate in volume. When we look at the breakdown between the types of jobs um, that we have in the database, uh, the full times are actually uh, leading, and hourly is about uh, a third of the, uh, a third of the, the content. In interesting stuff, and what about the nature of the clients? What are the types of companies that you can expect to work for remotely? Yeah, so that's, that's very interesting. It's, uh, I mean, if you're going to work for a company, you're naturally, you're gonna be integrated into the workflow of the company, you're gonna be interacting with them. So you're naturally probably wondering, you know, what kind of company it is. And if you look at the size, kind of unsurprisingly, startups dominate largely. Startups are always um, ahead of the curve. They're always uh, adopting new trends and uh, looking to find, you know, ways they're more nimble than the other companies. But we see a kind of healthy representation of uh, small and medium businesses with uh, maybe just you know, a few enterprises, but not so much. Uh, we hope that as those you know, small businesses grow into medium businesses and medium businesses grow enterprises, they're gonna keep you know, from the good experiences they had hiring people remotely, they're gonna keep that as they're growing. And of course, we should not forget how, fa how really fast some uh, startups uh, can turn into enterprises. Other, other than the size, one very um, interesting thing is what is the, indus what is the industry, what is, uh, what is the company that you're working for, what is it uh, doing? Um, and 
the software, software uh, of course dominates, that's kind of expected, but there's a whole range of other um, industries represented. Um, initially tried to uh, put it as, uh, tried to put it as a pie chart, but it just wasn't working, so uh, opted for a, for, a, for a tag cloud. And this picture, when I saw it, it kind of uh, resonated with me because um, it, sh it, picture it clearly showed the very um, good thing that I've, you know, about line of profession is that uh, pretty much any industry, any business can benefit from, you know, some piece of software uh, facilitating it, you know, raising it to a new level. And um, it just, it gives us a chance to work with people with varying backgrounds and, you know, meet a lot of interesting people that, you know, have different interests and backgrounds uh, than, than we have. Uh, now, uh, if you're working, if you're working uh, remotely, most of the companies are coming uh, from the U.S. So you're probably worried about what's, you know, what's with uh, the working hours. Um, and uh, I, I think Bojitar knows something about that. Do I? Do I know something? Let's see. Oh, I know. <laughs> so uh, mo most of the clients are pretty flexible, and they have no uh, work hour preference whatsoever, which means that you are the master of your work schedule and you get the ultimate flexibility, which is pretty cool. A very small number of clients requested something like four hours of overlap with uh, their on-site teams. And uh, no matter w how, which time zone you're normally living in, four hours of overlap is something pretty easy to come by. So I wouldn't worry that much about this. Uh, no concerns here. And um, to answer a question which I know is on Radan's mind, where are all those remote uh, uh, de developers? Well, they're all over the world, obviously, because when you're remote, you, you, get, uh, you get to choose where you are. Most of those people were born in some of the uh, Americas or in Europe, but uh, I believe that uh, five to 10 years uh, from this day, a remote work will probably be predominant in every industry which could uh, sustain remote employment. Sky's the limit there. And uh, something pretty interesting about Europe, you see this concentration of remote workers over uh, a specific area in the Balkans. You can zoom it in. And it turns out that uh, after Germany, Hrvatska is the country with the largest number of uh, freelance uh, engineers in Europe, at least uh, in our book. And this is quite special, especially for a country which is uh, like uh, 15 times more than Germany in terms of population. So keep rocking. <laughs> uh, you know, we can say um, a ton more about the, the benefits of uh, remote work, but we won't uh, because uh, we have uh, a, a ton of our co-workers sitting in a booth over there in the lobby, lonely. So approach them, ask them a few questions. They'll give you gifts and shit. Oh, only gifts. <laughs> uh, you know, in Bulgaria, shit doesn't mean what it usually means. It means things. So check, check, check it out. And uh, do, do not be limited by our product and our services. Try to experience uh, a remote for yourself because it is a really life-changing uh, um, thing. Yeah. For instance, uh, the, this previous year, for the first time in my life, I was having uh, uh, New Year's Eve at a beach uh, in a T-shirt, uh, drinking beers. This doesn't usually happen in Sofia very often. So, <laughs> as I said, sky's the limit. Thank you for... Uh, joining us and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. We have time uh, are there for any questions? questions. Do you guys have any experience with people who are uh, combining a part-time job at a company and freelancing? Yeah, there is actually, there's a fair percentage of people I don't know exactly, so yeah, I won't give the number, but per percentage of them setting their, you know, availability to a certain low number of hours working full-time at a company and then, you know, also freelancing in their free time. Yeah, that definitely happens. Are there any insights about that you can share? <laughs> not, not sure what you, I mean, pretty much 
I'm not sure what you're interested in here specifically. It's, uh, it, it works as it does with any kind of, you know, work outside the, the main job. There's, there's nothing special about it. Yeah. If you have time you, and uh, if you have the stamina, you can do it. Otherwise, it'd be kind of hard. This is my insight. Hi. Uh, the one graph that you didn't show is the rates graph. Yeah, I was expecting somebody's going to ask that. Um, I fortunately, can't talk about that because there's a bunch of you know contracts uh, with the clients prohibiting that. But what I can say is that um, compared to what's at least for this area, what compared to what's you know offered on the local market, it's definitely you know, on the high end. So how do you handle taxes and? stuff so that's that's handled by each freelancer so the term you know self-employed implies that you're employing yourself and then you're handling the you're handling that you're handling the taxes and you have your accounting and you have you know all the usual things you have as a freelancer uh, in particular TopTal is you know it's facilitating pretty much everything except that it, it's just um, with 70 plus countries from which developers are coming, you know, to handle all the local laws um, ourselves, it would require, you know, a gargantuan legal department. Yeah, I'd just like to say that although it is uh, kind of uh, unfortunate that people have to handle the taxes themselves, in many countries, the taxes when you're working as a freelancer are significantly lower than the taxes you would normally be paying. So it is kind of an inconvenience, but uh, in the end of the day, you end up with uh, more money in your pocket, so it is well worth it. And uh, my, my mother is an accountant, so it is easier for me, but... <laughs> and I can tell you from my you know, personal experience, I worked for a creation company, and you know, now I have you know, my own Obert. And uh, I, I mean, there are some difficulties with you know, the bureaucracy, but you know, when I, some, you know, when I drew, draw the line, uh, I don't want to go back. I, this is much, much better. Right. What he said. <laughs> we have time for a couple more questions. There's one, one over there. Feel free to raise your hand before. Hi. Um, you had one graph where you showed um, the demand for various frameworks by your clients and the Unity 3D was very high. I was just interested to know if Sir, you have what was high? Uh, Unity 3D. Oh yeah, framework. yeah, that's been appearing um, lately. Do you have uh, information whether it's popular because of the framework or the engine itself, or because of the support JavaScript and C Sharp? Uh, no, unfortunately, no. I I can't pull. It's the, the, that kind of data is too soft to pull. I mean. I would have to go manually and check it out. Uh, I can, I can, I did look a bit because um, I have a little bit of 3D background, so it just interests me. I had a look a bit, and I noticed that it's a mixture. The jobs are a mixture of games and um, just kind of visualizations for industrial and educational purposes. So there's a, at least while I looked, it's just anecdotal evidence. I'm not pulling statistic here, but there's a mix of games and serious visualizations. Final question. Don't be shy. Okay, last one. Uh, you guys were joking about enterprise, and in your breakdown of uh, who the employers were, you showed enterprise is a very small slice of the people who are actually going through your yeah, service. Yeah, it was four percent. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, enterprises don't go directly to uh, freelancers, so I'm wondering how much enterprise might be obscured in some of the small and medium where those might be system integrators. Do you have any information about that? No, I mean, because, well, if the enterprise decided to set up a small company to go through, then probably they don't want it to be visible. So there, there's a reason behind that, and, you know, we always honor that with the clients.